Let's talk tariffs. Don't worry, you haven't tuned into the wrong channel. This video is about 3D printing. We'll be talking specifically about the implications of tariffs on the prices of 3D printers and related goods, like filament or spare parts. And while this is a politically adjacent topic, I'll be focusing on the economic impacts, not the underlying policy considerations. I'm here to educate, not make enemies. This channel is about printing, not politics. 3D printing is a truly global industry. If we look at a map, we can see the distribution of 3D printing companies worldwide. The US is a powerhouse for industrial 3D printing, with many manufacturers of high-end machines, like Stratasys in Minnesota, 3D Systems in South Carolina, and Form Labs in Massachusetts. There's also a large number of filament manufacturers, like Atomic Filaments in Indiana, IC3D in Ohio, and 3DX Tech in Michigan, to name a few. North of the border, there's Mosaic Manufacturing in Toronto, with their automated 3D printing systems, and Dyes Design in Montreal, purveyors of high-flow extrusion systems. Mexico is a leader in 3D printing for medical applications. Across the pond, we've got E3D in the UK, Prusa in the EU, and of course, China, home to Bamboo Lab, Creality, and Flashforge, among others. Customers for these companies are as globally distributed as the companies themselves. Bamboo Lab sells printers to the US, Prusa sells printers to Canada, and Stratasys sells printers in Europe. So when tariffs are proposed that inhibit global trade, driving costs up for consumers, that's something to be concerned about. So why are we talking about this today? Well, the current US administration has proposed sweeping tariffs to the tune of 25% on imports from Canada and Mexico, although these are currently on hold for 30 days. They've also enacted a 10% tariff on all goods from China, and discussed implementing similar measures on the UK and EU. A tariff is a tax on imported goods. It's paid by the importer, but the cost is ultimately passed on to the end consumer. A tariff on China means Chinese goods become more expensive for US consumers, not the other way around. The detriment to the tariffed country is that their goods become less attractive in the US marketplace. In this way, tariffs can be used as a tool for political gain, leverage to achieve an objective like persuading a neighboring country to beef up their border security. The secondary benefit is that it bolsters domestic manufacturing, with the cost of domestic goods being cheaper in comparison, at least in theory. As a result of the tariff on China, US-based manufacturers of 3D printers and 3D printing filament will have a 10% cost advantage over Chinese companies, which can help offset the discrepancy in labor costs between these two countries. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the prices will stay that way. There's nothing to stop US producers from raising their prices proportionally. And even if the tariffs are removed at some point in the future, the market will have already adjusted to the new prices. A new baseline will have been established. For this reason, tariffs are inherently inflationary. So does that mean that Bamboo Lab printers will automatically be 10% more expensive for US consumers? No. As I mentioned, tariffs are paid by the importer. In most cases, importers pay wholesale prices. Take for instance, Micro Center a US-based reseller of Bamboo Lab printers. They buy printers in bulk. The volume earns them a discount. This is the wholesale price. Let's say the wholesale price of a Bamboo Lab printer is $500. 10% of 500 is 50. The retail price for the same printer is $8.99. $50 is only 5% of the retail price. So perhaps Bamboo Lab printers will go up in price by 5% in response to the tariffs but it's quite possible that in order to remain competitive, the wholesaler will split the difference, only raising the price by 2.5% and taking a cut on their profit margin. If you're buying directly from Bamboo Lab, the story is similar. They have US warehousing, so the price you see on their website already accounts for the tariffs. This translates, purely at Bamboo's discretion, to the following percentage increases in retail pricing, 10% and 5.7% on the A1 Mini and Mini Combo, respectively. 12 and a half and eight and a half for the A1, five and 3.75 for the P1S, and 4.5 and 3.7 for the X1C. In this case, 10% is applied to the declared value of the goods upon import, which in most cases would be even lower than the wholesale price. So given these numbers, in some cases, Bamboo has actually increased their profit margins in spite of the tariffs. So that's the scenario of an importer paying wholesale prices. But what if you are the importer? This is often the case if you're buying something directly from a manufacturer, and that manufacturer doesn't have US warehousing. For instance, you buy a Voron kit from Formbot. 
or a control board from Big Tree Tech on AliExpress. A lot of the time, these companies will have US warehousing, but not always. If the product ships direct from China, you'll be responsible for paying the full 10%. But that's not the only cost you'll incur. There's also been another big change to how foreign imports are handled in the US, and it's something you may not be aware of. In addition to the implementation of tariffs, the so-called de minimis exemption has also been eliminated. Until now, any imported goods totaling less than $800 would be exempt from duties and import taxes. This significantly reduced the burden of paperwork on customs authorities, while also saving you money and allowing you to receive your package sooner. With the new rules in place, there's no minimum below which you won't have to pay duties and taxes. So in addition to the 10% tariff, there may also be state taxes or category specific duties. Oftentimes, couriers will also charge you a brokerage fee for the convenience of handling the paperwork, which starts around $10 and scales with the declared value of the shipment. According to the National Foreign Trade Council, in the absence of the de minimis exemption, the price of an imported $50 package could double under the new rules. On the bright side, most Chinese companies underdeclare the value of goods, meaning that you, as the importer, will have less duties and taxes to pay. The tariff rate that's applied, either 10 or 25%, depends on the country of origin of the imported goods. The country of origin is defined as the location where the product undergoes a transformative change. Take for instance ABS pellets that come from China, but are extruded into filament in Canada. The transformative change occurred in Canada, so the filament is considered to be of Canadian origin. If it's then exported to the US, it'll be hit with a 25% tariff upon import, because Canada falls under the 25% bracket. A lot of companies, regardless of their origin, do their manufacturing in China, which, in addition to lower labor costs, now has the added benefit of a lower tariff rate, particularly for Canadian and Mexican companies. Take for instance Dyes Design, a Montreal, Canada-based company that designs high-flow extrusion systems. These are used by the American-based company Filament Innovations in the construction of their industrial 3D printers. Despite being sourced from a Canadian company, the hardware from Dyes Design assuming it's manufactured in China, would only be subject to a 10% tariff, and not 25. But it's easy to see from this example how the price of even American-made printers will go up. A large number of components for these types of machines are sourced from other countries. The steel for the frame might come from Canada, while the power supply and other electronic components most likely come from China. Add up all the costs, and the price tag of the finished product could rise by an appreciable amount. But what about filament? The US has a large number of domestic filament manufacturing facilities, like Atomic Filaments for commodity materials, or 3DX Tech for engineering grade. As the most widely used material by hobbyists, PLA is of particular interest. The majority of PLA pellets that are extruded into PLA filament are sourced from a US-based company, NatureWorks. So you might assume that the cost of US-made filament will remain the same. But let's take a step back. The filament is extruded in the US. The raw pellets are made in the US. But where does the raw material come from that forms the basis for the pellets? PLA is a biopolymer derived from organic materials like cornstarch and sugarcane. Do you know where the US gets most of its sugarcane? Mexico. So the US-based filament supply might not be immune to the effects of the tariffs after all. Although the US is the world's largest producer of corn. So depending on the ratio of corn to sugarcane, the effect may not be as severe. But do you know what is immune to tariffs? Digital assets, STL files. This is where 3D printing really shines. It's a method of decentralized manufacturing. You can exchange value without any physical assets crossing country lines. I, as a Canadian, can sell a digital copy of one of my products to a US-based customer who could then print it on their own 3D printer. If the same customer were to buy the physical product instead, it would get hit with the 25% tariff as it crosses the border, in addition to any other applicable duties and taxes. As global tensions continue to rise, the role of a 3D printer, its ability to transcend borders and democratize manufacturing will become increasingly important. So hopefully this gives you a better sense of what the tariffs will mean for the 3D printing industry. Prices are likely to rise, but not necessarily in the ways you expect. We'll have to wait and see how it all shakes out. In the meantime, let me know in the comments what you think of this whole situation. And if you found this video useful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. 
My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.